Come and play with us, listeners. Come and play with us for the 13 nights of Halloween. Hey, everybody. This is Rich Outfield. I'm Big Anklevich. Welcome back to another 13 nights of Halloween. It's the 13th annual event. I hope you're enjoying it. It's uh, not the 13th annual, by the way. Yes, it is. It's not. It's always the 13th annual. Last year was the 13th annual, and next year will also be the 13th annual. So oh, there. Hopefully next year both of us will be dead. Yes, one can only hope. Yeah. Well, we we were talking about urban legends yesterday, and, uh, you know, stories that get passed around, stories that people insist are true, or, I mean, even if they're, they sound dubious, it's like, well, uh, you know, if the girl died, then how do we know that this happened? You know what I mean? Or it's like, well, but we you're not supposed to pay that much attention to it. It's a story to say premarital sex is bad. But it reminds me, when you and I were growing up, there was this huge panic that everything was satanic, which Ooh, rhymed, I know. That's awesome. And I guess it started, I mean, who, started God knows where Hispanics. it started. There, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and and things became quite frantic. Oh, in my head that rhymed. It doesn't rhyme. Not quite, but it's close. <laughs> but it started sometime in the 70s, probably around, you know, when The Exorcist was such a big hit or whatever. But it, it, it was this hysteria that, that, that spread. And particularly, like, this movie is satanic. This band is satanic. This role-playing game, which will go without being named, is satanic kind of thing and it's a conversation that you and i had but i don't think we've ever had it on dune steve of how terrified people were about like the band kiss or the band acdc and how you know just how holy cow that's the that's devil mu music but when i hear kiss or i hear acdc today i just go oh oh guys the, the, dude, this is so innocuous. Yeah. Guys, this like, is this such was, a sweet song, guys. This was what you were talking about when you said this band was... Yeah, I remember once we were riding around once with some friends. And an adult was... I can't, I can't remember who this dude was. But there was some guy. Maybe it was the Scoutmaster. We were driving around and we were listening to ACDC... And uh, the guy, he turns to me and he goes, Isn't ACDC, aren't they supposed to be like a satanic or something? And I was just like, um, no. <laughs> and we just went on with it, which... Okay, well, let, 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 me, let me interrupt. You had to have heard this. Oh, yeah. Like, that couldn't have been the first time that you'd heard it. No, no, I totally because heard this that. Was... But I listened to ACDC all the time, and I knew, no, that's BS. Okay, well, you were a little wiser than the people around you, because it was a furor. Not not der furor. It was a, help me out. What the, 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 it was there, But people lost their minds over this. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. On the news, when I was just old enough to find out that records cost money... They were having like big record burnings and they, I would watch it and I was just like, holy cow. And I, I wish somebody had sat me down when I was five years old and said, this is why you shouldn't watch the news, son. <laughs> and I, I was probably eight, you know, because a five-year-old, you don't know that records cost money. But, the, but tell me now, what did ACDC stand for? ACDC stood for... Either against Christ's devil's children or anti Christ's devil's children. I've heard it both ways. Okay, yeah. We were, we were, the pulpits here preached anti Christ devil child. But, you know, again, bullshit. What was Kiss, by the way? Kiss, ooh, the scariest, meanest, baddest, darkest of all bands. <laughs> Kiss stood for? Kiss stood for Knights in Satan's Service. That's darn right it did. And uh, there was one other band with the this stands for this. And I don't know why I even remember this band. And you know which band I'm going to say, but it was... I don't know what uh, band you're going to... There's a third? What is it? The third band was Wasp. Oh, Wasp. Which was We Are Satan's People. Huh. And Wasp is completely forgotten. Maybe, maybe they were talentless. I don't know. But just... 
again and again and again, I was told that this is what this ba this is what this stands for, and Ozzy Osbourne and the Devil and Depeche Mode and <laughs> Depeche the Devil Mode. and Erasure and the Devil, Erasure, and, what the crap, uh, Krista Berg and the Devil, and Crystal Gale and the Crystal Devil, Crystal Gale and the Devil, yeah, you know it's funny, and Dolly because... Parton and the Devil, uh, Marie Osmond and the Devil. <laughs> There were some bands that eventually took advantage of this and purposefully did stuff to appear to be the devil band. For example, I think of Slayer. Mm -hmm. uh, they would have, like, you know, the, the pentagrams and the goat's heads and all that kind of crap. And they would sing about this stuff, too. Um, and then I heard somewhere where they did a interview with somebody where they are asking them about it, and they're like... No, we don't believe that any of them. We just do this because stupid kids will buy our albums if we do this. And I think Wasp may have been a similar. Was it no Venom? I think there was a band called Venom <laughs> that did the same thing. Um, and yes, for a band that you know they don't have a much talent or what, or they don't have a big label behind them or whatever, being put on one of these lists of tell your kids not to listen to this would make these bands. Yeah, it's like suddenly there are thousands, if not millions, of households that are mentioning the name of these bands, and and I'll, there's those rebellious kids that are just like, yeah, I'm listening to that. I don't even like it, but I'm listening to it anyways. Cause screw you, mom and dad. Well, yeah, and there's that. So I I I've told you this story probably two or three times because I love to tell this story. But again, I've never told this on the show, so I'm going to tell it now. Uh, when I was in L.A., you know, I lived with a bunch of guys. You know, I needed the money. No, uh, <laughs> we we were all a bunch of single guys living together, as you do. And this this buddy of mine, Mike, had a girlfriend. And Mike really, really liked music, as you do. And uh, she came through and she looked at his CD collection. And she says, that and that and that and that have to go. Because that was devil music, and she was not going to allow it if, as long as they were dating. And so he took, I think he had like a Black Sabbath album, and he had a couple Zeppelin albums, and he had uh, two or three ACDC albums, and he had to throw them away. He had said to her, can I just take it to the used CD store and get some money? And she's like, no, we're not going to profit from, you know, the devil's business. And so he had to throw them away. And he was telling me about this afterward. And I was like, oh, you could have given those to me. It's like, you know, I know one ACDC song because I heard Celine Dion cover it. I think they sound like a good band. He was a fast he kept his motor clean. He was the best man I had ever seen. And so uh, he said, well, no, they're all gone already. And it's like, oh, well, that's, that's too bad. But, you know, a couple months went by, and let's call her Lisa broke up with Mike. She uh, dumped him, as you do. <laughs> and uh, Mike said, uh, you know, I just broke up with Lisa and, uh, you know, we're not together anymore. And uh, I wondered, do you want to go to Tower Records with me? And I said, well, uh, yeah, I guess so. And he, he said, guess what we're going to be buying, man? And I said, I, I, I don't know. And he's like, come on, come on, think about it. And I was like, I don't know. I think that uh, Shakira girl has a, an album out. And he's like, no, we're going to buy some ACDC, man. It's like, you know, and all this time I was dating Lisa, I couldn't listen to any of that. I've just been dying to, like, we'll get, we'll get Back in Black and we'll get the other albums by them. <laughs> and uh, we'll get Highway to Hell and we'll get, uh, the, you know, just everything that's one day going to be used to sell Iron Man, we're going to buy right now. So we went to, Tower Records and we bought these ACDCs and we were listening to them and it was like the fir on the drive was the first time I had ever heard like we got biggest balls of them all and dirty deeds done dirt cheap and I was like wow this song is and it occurred to me especially because thinking about what Lisa had said and you know my parents had said and every you know pastor had said and all that I was just like wait a minute was it was it before this or after this that they became like Antichrist devil child and he's like, yo, it's totally during all of this. And I was like, but where, where are the devil music? And he's like, well, highway to hell. And, he, and I was just like, oh, oh, really? 
Yeah, you know, I, I was just, I was bummed, man, that it was like, it, it was one of those awakenings where you find out that maybe your parents don't know everything. And uh, so we listened to this, and from that point on, I loved ACDC. I was like, wow, what a cool band. There were three or four songs on there that I'd never heard that I really loved today that I was just like, wow, that was my first introduction to them was being stuck in L.A. traffic listening to that with Mike. And uh, I don't know, uh, you know, a month passes or two months pass. And uh, he's, he goes, hey, Outfield, um, do you want those ACDC albums? And I was like, what? What, what AC? Oh, the ones that we, you bought it. Why? And he goes, Lisa and I are back together. And she says, I have to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the punchline of the story. He ended up marrying Lisa. And, and as soon as they got married, you know, all the roommates had to go our separate ways because he was the guy who's place it was that we were all sharing but wow that was uh it was it was sad i i know this isn't really the scary halloween topic that i wanted it to be but it's just there's a i i don't know if it's human nature but but people sometimes seem to get off on saying that there's bad things in things that maybe are innocuous maybe it makes them feel more righteous maybe they're legitimately trying to look out for kids but i just with the whole acdc thing or or kiss i just i don't get it and you know when dungeons and dragons is a totally different subject but you know my friend jeff just loved dungeons and dragons from when he was a, a little kid and you know his parents just fought him every step of the way because they'd been told that it promotes satanism and that it promotes evil and 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 kids are going to lose the the line between fantasy and reality, and they're going to start, I don't know, wearing three piece suits made of human flesh. And so, well, he still talks about that sometimes, and you know, just how difficult that was to convince his mom and dad. No, 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 it's fun. It's just a bunch of nerdy kids drinking Mountain Dew, and uh, where's the Mountain Dew? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, <laughs> I cast a magic missile. Uh, is this still about urban legends, or are we just kind of veered off? No, I wanted to talk about like this. This is satanic thing from. The so this legend. is the satanic urban legend thing. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess part of it has got to be that we're looking back through a lens from long off in the future towards these this music. When we hear it, we think this is so innocuous and and it's nothing, and it's no big deal. Um, but at the time, that was heavy music. You know, it's funny because there was a guy that used to work with me. He was much younger than, than all the rest. I mean, I, I think the guy actually started working with us, like, while he was still in high school. Okay. And and now you and answer then, to him. Yeah, pretty much. He became full-time a little while later. But at at first, yeah, he was still in high school. And he would listen to, you know... The, the heavy metal of today. And when I mentioned one time that Quiet Riot was a heavy metal band, he's like, what? No, I'm sorry. Quiet Riot is not heavy metal. They're just rock. And I was just like, well, they may not be heavy for, you know, in today's standards, but the, you know, the term heavy metal was invented all the way back in those days to describe bands like them there wasn't a such thing as what you've got now where you know they play so fast and hard that you know you can't tell one note apart from the other because it's so fast i don't know i mean it's there wasn't the, the the death metal that brian lincoln listens to now didn't exist back then and quiet riot was heavy metal and you know they had their album metal health Mental health will uh -huh. drive you mad. Was it metal health? It's metal health. Oh my gosh. Yeah, metal health will drive you mad because they were heavy metal. And yeah, I mean, maybe that might be part of it. People were like, oh my gosh, this is the heaviest stuff. And nowadays, I suppose people would look at ACDC and be like, <laughs> no, but this other band, oh my gosh. Marilyn Manson, although Marilyn Manson Manson's is 20 something already, years ago. yeah, way in the, in the, in the past. But yeah, the, I can't think of anything, the contemporary that's like that. You know what I mean? It's it's uh, maybe you and I have just gotten too old, 
you know, we, we don't want to offend our parents with what we're listening to anymore and find out, oh, hey, Marilyn Manson was like the last benchmark or whatever. Yeah, you know it what seems I mean? to be. I remember back when you and I worked together, we worked with that same guy that I was just talking about, and you were writing a story where there was supposed to be today's version of Marilyn Manson, and you didn't know who the heck that would be, and so you asked this kid because he was younger and he would know, and he didn't know because there wasn't one. There wasn't a, a today's version of Marilyn Manson, and I don't know what the deal is with that. Maybe Maybe we've progressed beyond that paranoia. Maybe the panic of everything being satanic has changed to the panic that down by the border there's Hispanics that are coming north. I don't know. <laughs> the Maybe that's just kind of gone away. Maybe people don't care. Maybe they're worried about other things. they got to stop the gays from getting rights that they shouldn't have. or, or so. I don't know what has happened. That has changed things. Well, also the music industry is so much weaker than it once was. But I don't know. It's, it's again, when when we were growing up, there was there were less distractions, less things that you could just have at the press of a button. I don't know that uh, the there was the whole idea of back masking, where you could record something backwards and slowed down or sped up or. or and that your mind was somehow supposed to process this and make you want to worship the devil or start smoking marijuana or, <laughs> you know, I don't know, buy guest genes. And so uh, that was a big, big hubbub when I was like in junior high or whatever of all oh, music, rock music using this back masking. And, you know, none of that is ever mentioned anymore. It's just just a few years later. And nobody mentions anymore. Except for to make jokes about it. It's because it all turned out to be bullshit, right? I think, yeah, everybody's kind of realized, you know what, no, that's just crap. There's no way that that's anything. And yeah, the only time you ever hear about I think they used that in, what was that movie? It was the Josie and the Pussycats movie, I want to say. Okay. Where, like, the evil record company was doing something to music to... Basically, they were embedding, like, subliminal messages to buy stuff, and they kept changing them around. So you, you'd see the people, they'd be walking, and then the music would play, and they'd be like, Oh, I'm so tired of my Adidas sweats. I need a Puma sweats. And that was what was doing that. And then, yeah, I think it's a similar thing. It's just a, a joke in a corny movie anymore. It's not something that anyone gives any credence to. Well, there was an episode of uh, Amazing Stories that Robert Zemeckis directed where I, I think it was Eric Stoltz and Mary Stuart Masterson went to like this cemetery and they got a record player and got some heavy metal record. And if you turned it so that the record player would play it backwards, it made like this incantation that would bring the dead back to life. And uh, I think Christopher Lloyd played their, their psychotic... English teacher or whatever uh, in that episode and and uh, I just remembered thinking wait how do you get a record player to play something backwards you know it was a long enough ago that everybody still had record players I was like wait, I, I don't understand there's no switch on here to make it backwards yeah I don't know how that anytime I've ever seen it people did it by hand they pushed it around backwards and that sort of crap is so easy now with just like digital yeah. Files and, you know, stuff that you could just make it backwards right now, but. Yeah, I did that to make the water sound effect sound creepier on uh, Empire State Building Strikes Back. Cool. I, yeah, it was it was neat. The backwardsness. The back masking. Yeah. Is that what they called it, right? <laughs> yeah. See, there would be like concerted efforts to educate us about back masking and, and that, you know, don't fall victim to it because. It'll make you do stuff that you don't want to do. And, and that's fascinated me. All these years later, I've still written stories, and you've read a couple of them, about that. Of, and of, been forbidden to read a couple so, of other Yeah, there, there was one about where a, a kid was in a music appreciation class, and, and they talked about it, and they played the Strauss Smoking Marijuana from Another One Rides the Bus. <laughs> yeah, I deliberately got the title wrong. Or did I? 
And and he's just like, wow, this is so fascinating. And he comes with an up with an idea of of making it, you know, just barely inaudible, and doing subliminal messages, and then playing the songs for people and seeing if they react in any way. And then it goes horribly, horribly wrong at the end of the story. But I just, oh, that that idea of you don't realize you're being controlled or you're being hypnotized or you're being, you know, convinced of something is just fascinating to me. And it has to have that start in a the, the panic that people felt thinking that, you know, uh, oh, she, she was just a totally normal, decent girl. And then she listened to that song by Twisted Sister. And uh, suddenly, you know, she she dyed her hair so it looked like Cindy Lauper. And uh, she smoked a cigarette. You know, it's just like it was the end of our, our the family that we had known. And we had to kill her. Yeah, it's interesting, that whole thing, the panic, and just how it's gone away. I think, yeah, Marilyn Manson was perhaps the last guy that seems to have had to deal with that kind of stuff, with anybody giving a crap and want to come after him about it. At least as far as the satanic thing goes. Well, I think I know the that... internet has to have contributed to that. Because like we were saying with the Urban Legends topic, at the push of a button you can find out if this story is true or not. You know what I mean? Right. And just like, yeah, and that, that, that little Lutz boy went completely crazy after he listened to Cecilia by Simon and Garfunkel and cut up his whole family with a hacksaw. And you're just like, really? Wait, just a second. Click. Oh, no, he didn't. That has to have helped educate people. I mean, even though people are dumber than ever, you can find out if the story is true or not. And lots of times people will post something on Facebook and then somebody will respond and say, hey, that story is not true. Link. Right. It's nice that that's the way those things go, because I, I was I sure got sick and tired of the messages, the emails being forwarded to me by my parents. They seem to forward anything, <laughs> anything that was a dumb story would come along. And then, of course, I had my brother-in-law who would always email back to the whole list hey this isn't true look here on snopes.com it says that is probably a good thing but yeah i was just looking when i was i was trying to look up some stuff for a story that i'm writing and uh i came across something about marilyn manson and how everybody was blaming uh the columbine high school shooting on marilyn manson's music mm -hmm. which made no sense because none of the, the neither of the kids were even fans of Marilyn Manson music but he was a handy scapegoat right as well as like the doom video games or whatever video game was considered violent and 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 bad in those days yeah it's interesting how that works were we going anywhere with this or were we just discussing I don't think so I think we idea. were just discussing it but you know maybe we've it's time to move on to a more halloweeny topic I don't know Okay, we'll go, we'll get a Halloweeny roast going then. Woo! <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rush Outfield. Thanks, Satan. Uh, it's Satine. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license for some reason. When you and I were growing up, there was this huge, uh, uh, this huge, help me out here. What am I, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I don't for? know what you're talking about yet, so I can't help you. Hysteria. Craze. There was this huge. Knob. <laughs> Knob. <laughs>